So we, I think we'll just go, um, we'll just go all in then. Qu questions, you you pick whose questions go on. I think, um, firstly, congrats to my opponent for putting on a great performance. Um, I was very hungry this fight, you know, and I was motivated and I really wanted to win. Uh, going into this fight, we had a great game plan. I feel like I didn't execute the plan that my coach put in place. You know, there was mistakes and a few things that we worked on in camp, which I wasn't able to do. And um, I feel when you have a fighter that's hungry and has the will to win, like Danny White, it was quite hard for me to, you know, execute that plan. So I take you know, full responsibility for not executing the plan. I just need to work on a few things once I get back and, you know, um, just get better and better. Joe, do you think you'd have won if there was one more round? Listen, anything could have happened. But I was given 12 rounds to do what I had to do. Obviously, it didn't work out. There's no complaints here. We just have to take it on the chin. And then hopefully, I'm going to come back and fight here again sometime. Oh, well, the punch that you don't see is the punch that it gets you. So it was a surprise. But, um, you know, our team showed heart to get back up and to, to fight on. And I think, uh, we, I think we put on a more exciting fight than the last fight. So um, we're happy with you know, making it more exciting. But just the plan that, that Kev had in place, you know, if I executed it a lot better, it would have been a different fight. So the Chargers did it. To Pardon? It's different styles. I feel like you know Dillian was a fighter who came forward and very um, not I wouldn't say dirty, but he roughed me up, and he, he he did everything he could to get the victory. So you know he showed true heart. Is he on the same level? Um, <clears throat> you know, Joshua fought a different fight. You know he he fought a fight with um, keeping me at bay with his jab and sort of distance, whereas Danny White came in and, and looked for those big shots, which he was able to land. That first knockdown, Joe, it looked like a replay from a uh, headbutt of some sort, accident or otherwise. Uh, was there any punch involved in that knockdown, or was it purely his head? I think from the advice I was given from the team, it was a headbutt, the first knockdown, and then the second one was a... Did that shake you up a bit, the first knockdown? Um, you know, just surprised me when I got back up and, and carried on. Joe, What's your kind of feeling about that? Because obviously you've got scored 10-8 and uh, why, and without that, it looks like a draw on the scorecard. I think it's a round we were winning. I yeah. think it was a 10-9 round, and it went from being a 10-9 round to us to a 10-8 round to Billion. And uh, when you talk about that headbutt, I actually think that the effects <coughs> of that headbutt were suffered in rounds three and four. Joe just wasn't himself. And it wasn't until the fifth round, I believe, he actually he had everything going again. You know, he was, you know, he was actually a little dazed from that and shocked when he came back to the corner. Well, what I mean is, is, is there any kind of bitterness on your part then about the results? Obviously, you've lost the verdict, and if that if that round gets scored, if it goes as a head, but doesn't get scored as a knockdown. No, there's no there's no bitter feelings from our team. You know, we did, like I said, we did our best. I did my best. Didn't follow the the, the, the game plan, but you know, it's um. Live to fight another day. You know, he won on today, and congrats to him. Look, firstly, let me say I'm really, really um, proud of Joe. I thought he fought a, a very courageous, <coughs> a very gallant fight. He dug deep. We had a short camp. You know, it was good camp, but a short camp. And um, there were a couple of things that. You know, he could have done better on the day, but we knew that Dillian was a, a real physical guy. And I, I expected him to bring out the best in Joe and make Joe fight, and I think that's the sort of fight we all saw tonight. But, like, I, I, I'm very proud of him, and the way that he dug down deep in the, in the later rounds and came back and was a, an inch away from winning the fight. Um, it, it was a great fight for the fans. Um, you know, it's, it's the sort of fight that... Dare I say it as a trainer, but it's a fight that we need. We needed a, a real war like that. This is Joe's 
the, the Tekken fight was a hard fight, but this was a war tonight. And we were fighting a guy who was very, very hungry and a guy who, you know, he knew that he was gambling everything in this fight against Joe. And, um, you know, he, he sucked up some really big punches. You know, his boxing skills actually surprised me a little bit. Like, Dillian's a, you know, I'll admit it, you know, he's a, a better fighter than I thought he was. Where did you go from here? Because you fought a few times in London. Yeah. And while everyone is who comes through, you've got a hell of a lot of. Uh, support you. People like you, they can see you carry yourself well. And, you know, when, when help? Well, um, look, that, the, the funny thing is that um, finding the right comeback opportunity won't be hard. In fact, you know, because I've, I've soaked up, I've seen the event tonight, I've soaked up the response from the public, I was sitting sandwiched between Barry Hearn and Eddie Hearn, so I've been privy to their views on things which I won't share now, but I'm very confident that there'll be a range of great comeback options for Joseph Parker if he wants to come back. Um, and I believe, I've heard nothing to suggest he doesn't. He's a human being, it's his body, so I don't, I'm not going to bother him with that stuff. He can go home, meet a newborn baby daughter, relax, have a rest, then we take stock, we analyse the options. But the good news, there are a range, I can guarantee you there's a range of solid comeback options on the table. Um, I mean, you know, what I take over tonight, uh, the, I mean, Joseph's not one to, to really talk about stuff like this, so I didn't really find out the dressing room, but he said that the, the head that caught behind the ear shook the balance and equilibrium. Because for me, because I've watched all the fights, looking at the eyes, something didn't seem quite right. So, and th there's no excuses. Dillian absolutely um, came in as a bully and, and uh, was tough. Um, and, and, and for Joe to hang in there through those middle rounds, and then nearly win it at the end. So for me, it's frustrating because we're nearly there, nearly there. You know, had there been another minute, we might be celebrating victory. But that's boxing. It's a bitter, sweet, and brutal sport. And we've been on the receiving end. We drew some serendipity and luck. Um, so what do you do? I, I guess we take stock. We he heals his body, clears his head, and uh, we then look at. I'll probably call Eddie to begin, and we look at the options. But um, so I'm not not concerned about. Um, the immediate future, this, there'll be good opportunities. It's really about, um, like, when. And, I, you know, we've had a very busy three or four months. So, what was your question, yeah. mate? Joseph, is giving up boxing something you're considering? No, but I've had a goal. You know, I still stand by my goals that I have. Um, it will be great to be you know, a two-time world champion or unified champion. So I've already, you know, 30, 31, I'm out. But for now, I'm going to go hard. And give it everything I have. You talk about the fact that you were disappointed you didn't execute the game plan tonight. Is there a reason why that, that didn't happen? Um, you know, when I try my best to execute the plan, but sometimes when you're in, in the ring with a you know, solid opponent, you know, he can cause a few things to stop you from trying to execute that plan. And I believe the plan that we did have in place when, you know, a few things where I could have moved better, that we practiced a lot on camp and you know, kept my distance a, a bit better, it would have been different. But it was hard when you have someone coming forward, putting on a lot of pressure, and wanting to bash you. Joseph, so, so, Bruce Kevin, on that note, you you seemed, you know, you were watching that. You seemed quite animated, you know, in the, in the team talk times. What was it like for you watching Joe and knowing what he was capable of in the training and seeing it not potentially being carried out? Well, you know, obviously, I I always want Joe to fight his best fight. Um, it's hard to fight the perfect fight, and you know all the all the best game plans um, that you that you put in, put in place are only as good as the guy in front of you. And as Joe said, like you know, Dillian White cancelled out a lot of the things that Joe was trying to do. He was very physical, he was very aggressive, and he, he fought with a lot of hunger. And um, you know, Joe was putting his combinations together very well, but he was he was stopping in front of him after he threw the punches. Yeah. And Dillian would just, you know, he'd just fire back. His counters were easy to land. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Joe was allowing him to land those body shots in the early rounds, which is something that we worked on in camp, you know, not to allow him to hit Joe to the body. It's 
So what were you saying to it? You know, you, you seem to be having some quite heated moments. <coughs> well, you know, I think, you know, when you get in a fight like that, that, um, you know, when both guys are, are on the canvas and there's a lot of illegal tactics going on and it's a, it's a tough fight that's going backwards and forwards, you know, it's very hard to stay relaxed. And, uh, you know, I was speaking to Joe very quietly for a start and as we got into the middle rounds, I thought, okay, now I've got to get, I've got to stir him up a little bit here. And, you know, and I was just sort of trying to motivate him through um, to produce what I know he's capable of. Joseph. Because of the nature of the last round, do you think you deserve a rematch? Yeah. Yeah, you know, it would be great to have a rematch. You know, he's, um, it was, I think it was a great fight. You know, we threw a lot of punches and knocked each other down. And it just depends on what the team's happy with, you know, or if they can make a deal again. I think, I think a rematch, based on the conversations I've had, and this isn't coming from me, that a rematch is a distinct possibility. Um, I think... I mean, I haven't heard a single fan not say it wasn't a, a great boxing contest. And it had went, you know, one way then the other, and Joe nearly got there at the end. Um, so we were going in saying it could be fight of the year, and people are certainly saying it's one of the better heavyweight fights of recent times. So I think if we did decide to call for a rematch, we wouldn't be mocked or laughed at. People would say, yeah, that's legit. You take into account that headbutt tilting the scoring to a draw, and then the fact if we had another minute, we might have won. We wouldn't, and it's no disrespect to Dillian White, I think we could legitimately call for one if we wanted one. And there'd been a few conversations, so you never know. And, and you know, I don't think anyone would complain if, you know, White Parker 2 was announced. Uh, Joseph, after the Joshua fight, there was a clear sense of frustration in, I guess, how you boxed it. How would you describe your mindset right now about the fight you just had? You know, what, what's going through your head about that fight? Listen, I'm happy. You know, I, I lost to the better man on the day. But I'm excited. I'm still young. There's still a lot of work to be done. You know, i gotta, you know, I got to hit the gym again and, you know, keep training hard to get some abs, get more power, and to practice listening better, you know, to the instruction given in the corner. I'll speak for everyone. Uh, you are very, very popular here. You've got the reaction deserved at the end. Um, so first, does that make you more interested to maybe stay in England as a base for future fights? Uh, also, there was, you had traffic issues before. Did that, I'm not saying that's excuse, <laughs> obviously no one likes traffic. But did that, was the frustration boiling over in the car? Yeah, we, <laughs> it's funny you've mentioned it. We, uh, Two hours. We nearly got up and, and said we want to walk from, to the stadium. But that's not, there are no excuses. It's, you know, it's all, things happen. And uh, it's, uh, for us, it's fantastic that we have good support here. And uh, we mentioned many times, very welcome. A lot of people show us love and support when we're walking around and, you know, the hotel we're staying at. So whatever makes sense, you know, fight-wise and business-wise, I think we'll love to fight here again. Look, yeah, I mean, you go on, the gut feeling is we probably would end up back here, I think. But, um, but you never know, it is boxing, but, but yeah. Has anyone else got a question that this would ask? Yeah, with? I mean, with, with two back-to-back -back losses, is your partnership with KB something you're considering, Joseph? Our, our partnership is very strong, and you know, um, this fight I've taken on the chin. Like, there's, there's so much, you know, he can teach you all this, and it's hard for me to execute the plan, you know. And I, like I said before, if I executed the plan, it would be different. But it's very hard when you have a great, you know, challenge in front of you. So our partnership is strong. You know, I'm sticking to the team that I have. You know, we've had a big fight with Joshua. We had another big fight with Dylan White. So we, um, we're just planning, you know, planning and looking forward to the future. I, I, well, I'm a little insulted that you even asked that question. No, you know, I can't, I can't get in the ring and throw the punches for Joe. You know, I give every ounce of energy that I have to this man. I love this man. And um, my mission is to make him as good as he possibly can be. And I'm totally dedicated and devoted to Joe. You know, we don't just train together in the gym for one hour every day. You know, we spend the whole day together every every day, seven days a week. We're it's a very close team. He's probably the best Dillian White ever fought, and he's a tough guy. And he brought his a. Like he had a ten out of ten intent 
and we nearly got over him. So it wasn't actually that bad a night at the office when you analyse it factually. Do you think Dillian should have a point of deducting tactics? I thought he should have had several points to deduct it. I'm a little pissed actually. <laughs> you know, and I talked to, um, uh, to Ian about it before the fight. And I said, look, we're not after any favours. We've had a rough time with officials, but let's make it a fair fight. And I said, look, we know this guy's going to punch after the bell. We know he's going to hit Joe in the back of the head. What are you going to do about it? He said, he hits him in the back of the head. I'll caution him and take points off him. I said, really? Did I say that? When, yeah, when, yeah. when we were rapping? I said, we know he's a dirty fighter. OK, there are his tactics. And it works for him, OK? But I talked to the referee about it, and I said, I don't want any favours. Just be a, you know, officiate the fight. And he cautioned him a couple of times. Of course, he should have had points taken off, 100%. You, you weren't happy with the referee in the Joshua fight, so you're more angry tonight about this referee. No, I'm just, look, I'm, I'm, no, I'm a little angry because I had, I had no chance of even speaking to the referee in the Joshua <coughs> fight. The only question I asked of him, he threw his arms in the air. No, no, don't understand. The, 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 the one where the head bumps, <laughs> the, the, the head, the head bumps was, prob <laughs> was probably a genuine, a genuine mistake. So uh, the, with the Joshua fight, I think the referee actually tried to hinder our side and actually consciously favoured Joshua. That's my opinion. Tonight, I think in John Lewis, probably thought it was, it was, I'd put it more in the mistake category than the deliberate category. David, you said this week that a second loss for Joseph would be hard, very difficult for him to come back from. How will he come back from? Well, it's a good question. It's, it's, how, it's how will you lose is a big part of it. And, you know, we lost in the best possible way because of the sheer heart with that headbutt, the eardrum, the equilibrium, fighting on, nearly getting over in the 12th round. The, the, all the British fans I'm talking to are saying mass respect, and so it's a, it's funny like that. And and then I'm aware of commercial things that I can't really talk about. But I, the come the comeback opportunity won't be difficult. It's really a matter of getting things right. I mean, obviously the short camp wasn't ideal, but we chose to take it, so we own it. We don't use that as an excuse. But next time we'll have a rest and probably plan it with a long camp and pick the right opponent, and and we'll, we'll be back. I mean. People, I mean, Derek Chisora was criticised for he had, took a few losses and that, and look what he did tonight. People had written him off. Um, Klitschko had three losses before his 10-year reign as world champion. It's about how you come back. So um, whether we're done yet is up to Joseph Parker, not me, but I haven't heard anything to suggest that he's um, changing his plan for fighting on to the age of 30 or 31 or whatever. What if there is another opportunity quite close to this thing? This be the right one. We discuss it as a team and weigh it up. And if we decide to take it, we take it. But we, it's, we, we analyse and make our mind up at the time. Uh, All right, guys, it is getting yeah, late. We have lucky last from Joy. Um, David, you, sorry, I have to ask this. You mentioned the bet earlier. Will you be paying? He hasn't. Eddie, Eddie's. Just, I think he sympathises with me, so he hasn't chased <laughs> it up yet because he know he knows that I can't afford it the way he can, but. If he calls it, I'll pay it. He like he, he, he'll, he'll have to nominate a charity. Right? He, said, he said you can do his gardening for a week. <laughs> I'd rather pay. <laughs> <laughs> right, thanks, guys. Okay. We'll wrap it up there. Thank you. Thanks for waiting. Cheers. Thank you.